Yes, we've been rambling a little. How about some updates? I've got a few things that I came across, a couple of updates from last week, and something interesting that I thought I could show. Yeah. Huh. Hey, there we go. I've got one of them up already. Yeah. Um, our uh, good friend Jorgen posted, uh, teased for a couple of days, I must say. He was a, a good hype man for this blog post. Um, was teasing that he was... Uh, uh, working on the new uh, how to manage Dell BIOS using the Intune uh, support that was released in, I believe that was the 2403 service release of Intune. Um, so <clears throat> basically using Dell command and Intune, uh, you can do things like uh, configure BIOS uh, using the Dell command file, uh, as well as creating unique BIOS passwords for all of your Dell devices and have them stored in Intune. Um, so some pretty cool stuff here. Um, as usual, when Jorgen gets his hands on a, a new feature, uh, he went through some significant testing and wrote quite a detailed blog post here uh, if you are managing Dell devices and customizing BIOS and you're using Intune, um, go go read this blog post yesterday. <laughs> Bookmark this, go check it out and, and play around with it. Um, there's some great stuff in here. Um, a couple of updates that I mentioned from last week. Uh, Johan talked a little bit about the Patch My PC uh, Patch Tuesday support group, and we had some uh, good conversation about it in the chat as well. This was posted up on YouTube. Uh, also, a fantastic resource, as we've mentioned many times before. Um, go ahead and check this out. Great conversation uh, from the folks over there. Um, good stuff, as usual. Well, uh, the the... The content creation aspect and the conversation good stuff, but having to talk about CVEs and uh, things like that, uh, that stuff's not that, not that great. Um, and lastly, as far as updates, uh, we talked a little bit last week about some of the localization issues that were happening with the uh, new 23H2 security baselines that came out in Intune. Uh, those baselines were using a localized uh, version of some of the settings rather for accounts um, rather than well-known SIDs uh, in those security baselines. Um, over the uh, towards the end of last week and into the weekend, uh, Microsoft did confirm that that had been uh, uh, the hot fix had been released and uh, deployed out to all regions um, to fix that issue. So be sure if you were running non-English operating systems, maybe if you are even running English operating systems just to get this fixed and up to date, uh, go ahead and create new baselines um, because as they mentioned here, the Intune support team mentions here in the tweet, the fix is not retroactive. So you do have to rely on new settings. Uh, so that was what I had for updates, but one thing I did want to show quickly, uh, talked last week about uh, a, a, a solution that was released um, called Maester, and I uh, was able to get it running. Um, I shouldn't say I was able to, like it was very difficult because the documentation was fantastic and it was very easy to get running. Um, so... <clears throat> Maester was, uh, just to recap, um, a PowerShell um, uh, framework, a test automation framework uh, using Pester uh, under the hood to perform a number of different tests across your uh, Entra environment. Now, it tests things like conditional access policies to see if they're effective, if they're created, if they're not created, and you get a nice green or red pass or fail. Um, and there is some uh, 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 promise of, because it's open source, um, you're able to contribute your own tests uh, that may be looped into the project. And it sounds like the project will be um, expanding here in the future. I, I haven't seen any specifics around that, but the thought is this isn't a, uh, we released it and we're done. At least that's what I'm gathering from it. 
So um, really quickly here, I've got the uh, docs page up for Maester. It gives a bit of an introduction, probably uh, spells out what their plans are uh, a little bit better than I just did. But beyond the introduction, we get to the installation guide, and this is pretty much it. Uh, ins make sure Pester is installed, install the uh, Maester PowerShell module, uh, create a couple of directories, uh, install the tests, and then connect. And so here in the background, um, I won't run it again, just because we have it up, or I have it up here already, but you can see I did those very things. Uh, created my uh, Maester directory here. Um, so tools, C, tools, Maester, uh, went over to that directory, installed the two modules, uh, created a, a test directory and changed into that, and then placed my tests there as well. So we could actually go over to that directory real quick and see what we have in there. And basically, we've got the various tests um, that we have in here. So these are all pester tests using PowerShell. Um, and then we'll also have the test results, which I'll show you here in just a moment. Um, but essentially, after we do that, we connect, which you'll be uh, you'll have to log in interactively, at least in my case. I haven't checked to see if you can log in with an application or something like that. Um, I believe you can because there is documentation for configuring these tests to run automatically uh, on, on a scheduled basis uh, using either GitHub or Azure DevOps. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but I connected interactively, went ahead and ran the invoke maester command, and it went through all of the tests that I have configured, which at the moment are just the default tests tells me where the report was generated, how many tests I passed, and how many failed. And running it for the first time here in a lab that I do a bunch of silly things in, you can see that I have some, some things that I need to look at. Uh, and so one of my favorite um, one of my favorite things about this solution is the nice, easy to read output that we get here in HTML format. Um, you can see how many tests were run, how many passed, how many failed, how many things weren't actually tested in my environment. A really nice break, breakdown, I think, uh, by category as well as pass failed. And then down here we have all of the various tests and whether or not um, we passed them or failed them. And when you click on a, a single test, you'll actually get um, uh, some level of detail for the test. And in some cases, you'll see how you might remediate uh, the test. Um, but getting all of this additional detail, you can see that all of the tests are categorized, they're tagged, so you can sort through these things as well um, here in, in this drop down box. Um, just a, a really, for an open source report, uh, I think coming out of uh, a handful of PowerShell commands. This is this is a fantastic looking and very useful um, tool. So if you're uh, managing identities, conditional access, uh, any of that stuff, which many of us uh, might be, um, go ahead and give this a look. Uh, really, really great stuff and kudos to the team that put this together. So that was what I had for today, Johan. All right. Um, I had a, a few things um, that I stumbled across. All right. First, um, I was uh, obviously it was Patch Tuesday, but it was also another uh, round for the uh, BitLocker slash UBFI uh, CVE circus uh, of applying <laughs> uh, updates. And uh, let me go ahead and share my screen real quick. Dum, dum, dum. I'm going to go ahead and bring that one up and remove yours. So 
Gary Block, with some good aid from Mike Terrell, has been working tirelessly or providing a good way to apply uh, basically that, that the patch to remediate, remediate that particular fix. Uh, depending on how you do this, uh, the challenge is you're going to require either six or, six or seven reboots just to get that one fully installed, um, which is, of course, royally painful. It can be hard to just convince a user to reboot once and now come and say, that, well, uh, you have to do it seven times. But long story short, uh, Gary, to get with some help from Mike here, I'll uh, figure out how to create the sequence to do all of this. Uh, there is a new version of this sequence available um, uh, today. I went ahead and imported that into my config manager environment. So this is what the latest version looks like. You can see there is a uh, more flat structure than the original version. And there is also here additional checks. It will check that the operating system has the right uh, patch levels in, installed for the different versions of Windows that it supports. And also there are checks to determine, okay, where are we in terms of uh, different steps of applying this update? And then each of these steps with the multiple reboots uh, takes care of the configuration. But this is, I mean, <laughs> Having to create a hundred of my hundred steps, there are 40, 50 step sequence to apply a patch that is a little bit more than should be needed. But that's where we are right now. So Gary, Mike, can't thank you enough for putting this together. Uh, for folks out there, do play around and test this with an emphasis on test because the success level is going to depend on a lot of factors, including what BIOS version you are on out there. Uh, so you may very well have to patch BIOS in order to apply things like this. Uh, Microsoft has some known issues they posted already around uh, this particular patch, but this is something that we will have to work with now for the next upcoming months. And once the machine is patched, uh, well, good luck on getting your old boot images to, to boot up device again. You have to update those as well. So work in progress. Um, would that be nice if this would easy, have been easy? But again, well, we probably wouldn't have a job. So there, there are good things to it. Right. So that's what I stumbled across. And of course, we will share that link um, together with the others. Uh, then I stumbled across a, a pretty uh, nice read, I thought, or good read. It was a success story from Intel uh, that Per Larson shared out uh, how they were able to do a uh, in-place upgrade uh, in uh, about uh, three months here. Uh, using Intune for it. And the white paper that downloaded there are some good technical details around their journey to use Intune to patching. And as you can see, it's uh, when you scroll down and read through this post, there were a good uh, 80K devices, I think, that eventually was upgraded. And a little bit about that learning. So if you have a five, 10 minutes over, it was a good read. Uh, this one is not as uh, extensive as what I call the high mark of uh, uh, in-place upgrade documentation. And of course, I'm a bit biased here, but Mr. Mike Terrell, uh, even though this one is a little bit older, uh, has, let's see here, uh, a table of content for uh, how he and Gary and a few others went about dealing with large-scale in-place upgrades. And even though this was for Windows 10 and it's a few years old by now, there is a lot of value in this one here. So highly, highly recommend to, to get it a read. Uh, but this one from Intel was uh, an interesting one, especially since they were using Intune uh, to do this. Um, yeah, that was what I had in terms of news. Mm -hmm.